Hi, my name is Dylan Zier. I'm an SRE manager for Google Cloud's BigQuery product, and I'm excited to be presenting as part of SLOConf 2021. I want to talk about a technique which can be used to reduce false positives in alerting, especially in cases where the underlying metric has large variances in sample sizes. I didn't create these techniques. These ideas and mathematics come from statistical and data science research over many decades. The idea I'll describe was originally proposed by another team member, and we have since adopted it and adapted it to many new use cases for our alerting. First, I want to talk about metric sampling and how this can impact SLIs, SLOs, and alerting. Often a metric is evaluated by using an aggregate of samples within a sample window, kind of shown here. For example, error rate might be errors per minute, or latency might be P90 over five minutes. An important question is how many data points are being considered when evaluating the metric? An easy way of evaluating the samples is to give each sample the same weight and to use a simple percentage of bad samples, or maybe good samples. This is mathematically easy and usually provides an intuitive signal. However, simple percentages can be problematic when the sample set is small. For example, if there are 10 samples and one error, the error percentage is 1 tenth, 10%. For a 3.9 service where the error threshold is 0.1%, this measurement is far above the threshold and is going to cause an alert. For this same service, even a thousand samples and only one error would result in an alert. A single, single value in the sample set may not be significant, but it can still affect the outcomes. Using simple percentages for a highly available service depends heavily upon the overall sample rate. A high QPS service can be measured more confidently than a low QPS service. Now imagine a situation where an application is heavily used within a company. But the period of high QPS is only during business hours, and an occasional error doesn't break the three nines threshold. Now imagine a lone worker coming in on the weekend or during off hours, their usage is low QPS, so any application error they receive will break the threshold and generate an alert. Probably at the least desirable time and in a situation that is not meaningful to the overall service. These false positives in a service where sample sets can vary in size by orders of magnitude can be reduced by using statistical techniques that take into account the number of samples. Now I want to talk about using binomial confidence intervals. This is a statistical technique that answers the question, how confident am I the alert threshold has been reached? A confidence interval provides an upper and lower bound to the calculated error rate. In this example of four requests and one error, the simple error rate is 25%. The confidence interval indicates the actual error rate is somewhere between 3.5 and 75%. As more samples are collected, the calculated error rate may end up anywhere in this range and likely not exactly 25%. There are many ways to calculate a confidence interval. In the examples that I'm showing, we use the Wilson score interval. These are the equations for both the upper and lower limit, as just mentioned. Either of these limits may be useful depending upon the situation. For the error rate example I've been describing, the lower limit is used. For alerts where a measurement below a threshold is used, then the upper limit might be more appropriate. Here's the mathematical formula as a snippet of Python code. The values used in the previous function are as follows. Z, the desired confidence level, N, the sample size, X, the number of errors, and P, the proportion of errors. Of the values used by the function, only the z value is determined ahead of time and is independent of the samples. This value determines the confidence of the interval. I've listed two suggested values for z. Others' values can be calculated if needed. The 95% value will result in a narrower set of values than the 98% value. For example, the 95% value might provide a lower limit of 5%, where the 98% confidence value might only be 2% because of the higher confidence that is required in the range. 
Here are some values of the lower limit function using the previous example service. Rather than alerting directly upon the calculated error rate, the alert is configured to use the lower limit of the confidence interval. For example, one error in 100 requests would be a 1% error rate and would have caused an alert. Using the lower confidence limit of 0.04%, which is below the threshold, no alert is created. As the number of samples in the window increases, this lower limit value approaches the calculated simple value. This technique allows a high QPS service to be monitored with a high reliable threshold and still have reasonable behavior during periods of low QPS. Here's some other reading and other resources that you could possibly look for. Um, I will be available during the Q&A session to answer any questions about this technique or how it can be combined with other techniques to create more reliable SLOs and alerting. Thank you.